So I watched Raw this week. I watched AEW Dynamite this week. And I gotta say, easily the best show of the week had to be SmackDown. And if you agree, you should smash that subscribe button and follow the show on Twitter. And even if you don't, you should do both of those in kind. That way you could rant and rage against me. It's therapeutic. It's really helpful for you. But beyond question, the most pleasurable wrestling viewing experience I had of the week was watching SmackDown. It absolutely was. And, and why is that? Of course, a big, big reason for that is our tribal chief, the head of the table, the big dog, Roman Reigns. And he was mad. And he should have been mad. Because Adam Pierce went against common sense and logic. Adam P. Pierce, scrap Iron Pierce himself, just had to go and make that match with Kevin Owens. Roman didn't want to do it. But he felt like he had no choice but to have to do what he did. Wouldn't have had to do that if it wasn't for good old scrap iron Adam Pierce trying to sit there and chase some days of glory here in WWE, trying to make it all about him. So predictably, Roman Reigns calls out Adam Pierce to kick off the show. And eventually, I think reality was setting in to scrap iron that he made a boo boos. He made a really bad boo boos, and he doesn't know how he's going to deal with said boo boos. But Roman's bad, and he should be mad. And they're, and they're setting up a gauntlet match to determine who faces the tribal chief at the Royal Rumble. All Roman's trying to say is, hey, shouldn't I have some say-so? I'm the champion. I'm the head of the table. Shouldn't I have some say-so around who will be my next opponent at the Royal Rumble? I think it's a reasonable request, don't you? I think it's relatively reasonable. But, you know, Roman decided they were going to deal with Adam Pearce in their own way, in their own time, and he was safe for now. And, and what a great start to the show. Like Roman just magnificent on the mic. Jay looking at Adam Pierce like, son, you done fucked up now. Because <laughs> Jay know all about that hard-headed ass, never learned his ass a lesson life, don't he? Incredible. And then you come right out of this into an Intercontinental Championship match as Big E defending against Apollo Crews. And apparently Apollo Crews' balls dropped. You know, I, I don't understand why there was this big confusion about both of them had their shoulders down to the mat. What happened? And you cut away to commercial break. At least that's a good way to leverage a commercial break is you build a little suspense of what just happened. What are they going to do? So you want to come back and watch it. That I thought was well done. But the way the commentators were acting so confused about, well, what does this mean? Like, we've never, ever seen this before. Come on now. It's a tie. Tie goes to champion. He retains. And we move on. But when I said apparently Apollo Cruz's balls dropped, he sat there and went after Big E and said, we're not doing that. And I guess here's my thing. Because Big E ends up winning in the grand scheme of things anyways. It was cool to see Apollo Cruz flash a little bit of personality. But what would you rather see? Let me know in the comments. Would you rather see Big E have to wrestle matches like this against Apollo Crews? Or would you rather see Big E as Intercontinental Champion face opponents each week and win by a five count? What do you think would get him more over? What do you think would make him stand out more? I know what my answer is, and it's not matches like this against Apollo Crews. That's just my opinion. And something I didn't reference at all in the SmackDown review, I believe, last week. Uh, it's really cool to see Sonya Deville back. I'm really happy for her. I'm glad for her fans as well, especially the ones that don't get all creepy and try to obsess over her and break into her damn place. I was a little surprised that she's just coming back now and she's basically a glorified personal assistant for Adam Pearce. Interesting. But hey, apparently she felt like she was ready to come back. The company's given her an opportunity to get back on television. I am all here for it. So I think it's very, very nice to see her back on TV again. As you know, something like that could be a dramatic, traumatic type of event that some people would never be able to fully compartmentalize, get over, and move on from. It's easy to understand how that can happen. But I applaud and appreciate Sonya for sitting there and saying, no, fuck this. I need a little time, but I'm going to live my life and I'm going to do what I do. 
And I, I appreciate that. I respect that tremendously. What I don't respect, though, is what happened in this tag team championship match. <laughs> Fuck Dolph Ziggler. The dirty dogs wear pink. Help me understand this. Number one, why are they the dirty dogs and why is that supposed to be a good tag team name? Number two, why are they wearing pink? And number three, why is <laughs> Fuck Dolph Ziggler getting a tag team title shot against the Street Profits? The Street Profits entertain some people. Some people like the Street Profits. These guys can do different things. The giddy dogs with <laughs> Dolph Ziggler can't do any of that. They're just wasting Robert Roode. That's all the hell they're doing. And the whole thing about Montez Ford and the knee it was stupid. Like, this just pisses me off. Like, really? We're giving that fucking job and piece of crap any type of title in 2021? No, you send him out there. What would be a better use of his time is for every week for two months, he goes out there and challenges Big E for the Intercontinental Championship and every week Big E pins him with the count of... See how much more interesting you would be? I'm just saying, fuck this. And most importantly of all, the Ziggler. I will say one thing that has grown on me in recent weeks is Billy Kay going around backstage to everyone showing her resume. And, and, you know, I appreciate the attention to detail that, you know, she's got mosh pitting on her resume and she actually added it there. So is she wanting to join the riot squad now? Or are we actually going to do that? Again, seems like generally a gigantic exercise of futility of waste of time to sit there and break her up from a tag team unnecessarily just to eventually throw her into another group, another tag team uh, that has even less going for it. You know, why, why do we do these things, Vince? Why do we sit there and split up tag teams with no real reason, with no purpose, with nothing planned for them, just to eventually put them back in less important tag teams? You did it with Peyton Royce, and it sure looks like you're gearing towards doing that with Billy Kay. That's stupid. There is no other way to call that. That is just stupid. I'll do it. I'll figure it out later. Except you never figure it out, a-hole. Anyway. The main event, gauntlet match. No Kevin Owens, surprisingly. Winner of this match goes on to face Roman, Roman Reigns at the Royal Rumble. And what did you all get out of this gauntlet match? It's a fascist conspiracy against Sami Zayn. Not only does he have to worry about the ring crew, he has to worry about WWE's camera crew being slanted against him. And apparently he has to worry about his own camera crew that he hired because they weren't in position, he got screwed, and he loses. This man should be the real Intercontinental Champion right now, and instead we're jobbing him out like this? It's horrendous. It's a conspiracy. I know a lot of you were impressed with what Shinsuke did in this match and his performance and the fact that he was able to beat several people up to and including your hero, the American Dragon, Daniel Bryan. It was an impressive performance for Shinsuke. Yeah, you might wonder, well, where the hell is Cesaro and what do they do with that? Um, but it was really an impressive performance for him. It, it, I would argue it's the m most entertaining, most impressive thing they've done with Shinsuke since he's been on the main roster. And tell me how I'm wrong. Like, really, tell me how I'm wrong. Now, for those of you that are sitting there and freaking out about Daniel Bryan not winning this match, would you rather have Daniel Bryan face Roman Reigns at the Royal Rumble or would you rather potentially have build up by him winning the Royal Rumble and going on to face Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. Like, if that's where they're going, and it certainly seems there's a pathway to that happening, wouldn't you rather want that? Wouldn't you rather want all the story and narratives that can go along with Daniel Bryan and Roman Reigns facing off at WrestleMania? I'm just saying. But the big news here, of course, was that earlier in the night, uh, Adam Pearce got added to this gauntlet match. So here he comes out waiting to get his inevitable doom that he knows is going to come. Like that's got to be some type of walk for Scrap Iron Adam Pierce. You might have been a multiple time NWA champion, but that was for an irrelevant organization. 
and you're in the big dog's yard now. You're at the tribal chief's island. Welcome to the island of relevancy. Now you get your comeuppance. And of course, what do Roman and Jay do? They go after Shinsuke, make sure that business is handled very easily. Also send Adam Pierce a bit of a receipt, a bit of a lesson, a bit of a teaching. But they make sure that Adam Pierce wins. So as of right now, yeah, as of right now, <laughs> your universal title match at the Royal Rumble is Scrap Iron Adam Pierce versus Roman Reigns. And I know a lot of you are going to probably point to, well, that seems kind of stupid. This guy hasn't wrestled for WWE. Now he's getting a title match. I love every bit of this. Because you know what the WWE has in this particular case? They've got options. Now you can certainly point to, I think they're just going to have Kevin Owens fill in for him and get there somehow, some way. Okay, then you get another Kevin Owens versus Roman Reigns title match, this time at the Royal Rumble. You know, the first two have been really good. Why would the third one be anything other than spectacular, right? Okay, and you've got a couple of weeks now to play off that potential story. But if you don't go there, I actually think the more intriguing option here is Adam Pierce, Because you could play this out over the next couple of weeks to where Adam Pierce is like, I'm retired and I'm not doing this. You know, I don't want to do this. I can't do this to all of a sudden. As the time goes along, he starts to remember a little bit of who he is. And he says, by God, Roman, you know, I was a former multiple time world NWA champion. I've got an opportunity that I never thought I was going to have. So by God, I'm going to take it. Like you could build a story out of that. And you could still put this and piece this together at the Royal Rumble where Adam Pierce gets some really nice hope spots and Roman Reigns clearly establishes his dominance. And all the while, having an Adam Pierce get punked out and beaten up isn't hurting anybody on the damn show. So as much as you can point to, you can find some creative way to throw Kevin Owens in here. And that would work, and that would absolutely work, and that could make for some good television over the next few weeks and lead to another great, phenomenal title match between the two at the Royal Rumble. I would make the argument now that I think the story is more interesting, the story is better, has more potential and possibilities with Adam Pierce. Now that you've introduced this option to me, I want to see Adam Pearce versus Roman Reigns, not Kevin Owens versus Roman Reigns. And if WWE, that's the seed you wanted to plant, then you've succeeded with me. But if it's not, oh boy, did this backfire on you. So I'm curious to hear from you guys. Would you rather see Kevin Owens versus Roman Reigns again for the title? Or would you rather see this kind of underdog story of Adam Pearce? taking on Roman Reigns at the Royal Rumble. Which one would you rather see? I've made my case very clearly known. Tell me what you think. And I hope you enjoyed this SmackDown show as much as I did this week. Again, smash that subscribe button if you would. Follow the show on Twitter and do all that stuff. Yeah! Let's do this! I'll see you guys later. I'm out.